all my life. Uh, I've managed to run the UAE Rally Championship, <coughs> the, run the events and the operations at Emirates Motorsports Federation, yeah, Dubai Autodrome, Yas Marina Circuit, uh, organized a lot of rallying, off-roading, and uh, test drives, a lot of it. So uh, it's time about to, to utilize my knowledge and my expertise within motorsport to build something from UAE to UAE and uh, abroad. So welcome again. Okay, hi everyone, thanks for coming. I'm uh, Bruno Lafitte. Uh, I am one of the three founders of uh, Darouk Motors. I've raced for uh, about 10 years in different formulas as uh, Formula Renault, Formula 3, and IndyCar as a test driver in the United States. Uh, after this, I stopped my career and I was the coach of uh, Adrien Tambay, uh, who's actually in the German uh, BTM Championship. And uh, I'm also the nephew of a famous uh, racing driver, Jack Lafitte. Uh, we used to race with uh, Adrian uh, Campos here today, and um, so nice, nice to nice to see you. And the other people uh, around the table. Um, so our partners are from the engineering side, uh, Campus Racing. We have quite a few people from Campus, so I'm sure they'll introduce and talk a lot about the great things they do. Uh, and generally, uh, Julio, who are our design and manufacturing partner, located uh, in the UAE, absolutely critical uh, for the project in terms of uh, manufacturing uh, and design. Uh, Emilio is not here, I think he's, he's in Abu Dhabi, uh, probably working on something. Uh, I'll let Philippe introduce himself and then uh, Fred and, uh, and Anthony. Hello, I'm Philippe Gottfried, uh, technical director from Campos Racing. We are a racing team involved in, in many championships in, all over the world, in particular in uh, GP2, GP3, Formula 3, in the Formula E, we're running actually two teams. Uh, we are also in the World Touring Car Championship, so we are a wide range uh, racing team um, with a lot of engineering as well. Um, Adrian is uh, the person who's been pushing this many years. He's, uh, Spain's uh, first real Formula One racing driver, and uh, with this we we had uh, let's say the path uh, done to to do a lot of a lot of things. Out of this, uh, being a long time friend with uh, Bruno, we were thinking let's uh, let's use our engineering capacities to to design uh, or let's say to calculate the all the specs of the car. Uh, in particular, we did design the, the chassis. Uh, we did calculate the, the weight, the weight distribution, the, the stiffnesses, and we tried to do a, as good job as we can, which you will see uh, should have a, a great result. We've been uh, working as well on the suspensions, on the, uh, on the transmission, etc., and um, hand in hand uh, with uh, Fred and uh, with Anthony uh, to, get, to get this car, let's say, uh, at least on the on the calculation side, well made from the from the first moment. Uh, our racing experience helped us a lot, uh, and for our engineers, it was as well a very nice breath of fresh air, as we always see in the same uh, race cars. We were very happy to work on this project because it's a really very exciting project. It's very nice. Uh, <laughs> we like we like uh, we like to work on beautiful things. This car is very beautiful um, and a project which is new in a country like this is, is of course very interesting especially coming from old Europe so welcome and, and thank you for for having a look at this and yes this weekend we're racing with our GP2 GP3 team so some engineers who did work with us on, on this are not here now because we are on the racetrack preparing the, the race weekend and we have uh, the pressure is on so you're welcome also to come to to see us uh, this weekend, especially Rio, who is fighting <coughs> for the third place in the championship and um, did us the, the big favor to come because he's under serious pressure. <laughs> well, thank you. We'll get you talking, Rio. Let's okay. finish with the. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Frederic Juillot. I'm French and uh, I'm living in uh, Dubai since um, uh, seven years now. 
And uh, 2009, I created um, the company Equation Composite. The head office and the workshop are located in Dubai. Um, our main activity is um, making custom racing boats in carbon fiber. A year ago, I met um, Anthony Janari, and we decided to open together an automotive uh, branch, Janari and Julio Special, JG Special. We provide a complete solution for special car projects like the Zaru Sunriser, which is designed and built uh, in uh, our facilities in UAE. We are very proud uh, to work in partnership with uh, the Zaru Motor. Thank you. So I'm uh, Antoine Janari, I'm a car designer. <coughs> and uh, as Fred explained before, I know I'm uh, in charge of the design of the Zarouk. Under this uh, newly company, I created with uh, Frédéric. And um, in this company, we want to take care of special projects only based in, uh, in the car industry. So it's like a new branch inside his own company. So we are based here in Dubai. And uh, we are very proud as well to, to work with Zarouk Motors for this first uh, first project. I'm also a car designer for W Motors, which is the other car company based here. So I designed, for instance, the Lycan, Lycan Sport, and the Fenrir Super Sport. It's a car maybe you saw uh, at the Dubai Motor Show this year. And uh, so I hope you like the design soon, that's what we can be in vain. And if you have any question about the design or anything, just uh, feel free to ask me or to come to me. Thank you. Thank you. Adrian, uh, you so you can't see him because he's on the, he's on the front stand. So uh, if uh, he's hiding, yeah, he's hiding. <laughs> but we had a quick discussion. I think uh, we're very happy that we uh, we're working with you. I don't know if you have a few words to say about the project, if you want. No. Uh, hello to everybody. I just say that uh, I am very proud to have uh, this collaboration. For our people, like uh, Philip says, uh, it's a fresh start. And uh, we try to help with our knowledge as much as, as we can. And uh, I was telling that uh, for me, this is something different. It's a very nice car. We see all the buggies in the, in the desert that uh, are not nice. And, uh, <laughs> but not as nice as ours. <laughs> you will see that uh, this car is very, very nice. I am completely sure that uh, we'll have a very good success. And uh, just uh, I want to say all the best luck. I'm very proud to be part of campus, part of the, of the project. And thank you very much for thinking us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the guy who's under pressure here, we're under pressure, but you are really under pressure. I don't know. Uh, I know you really like the car. What, what do you think about it? You, you, contrary to most people here, well, these people have seen it, but those haven't yet. But uh, so, do, did you like the car? Or uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, um, I'm uh, Big Ariando. I'm racing in GP2 series, and um, most of the time, I, actually, I'm Indonesian. A race driver and most of the time I spend a lot of time in Valencia together with Campos Racing and I've seen that um, Philippe and Emilio's every day has been working a lot not only for my car but also for <laughs> the, <laughs> the development of the new buggy cars and um, all I can say is just to wish you guys all the best for the new challenge and um, hope everything will go as well um, in the next few months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're, we're wishing you luck for the, the trials that are fairly important for your career at, uh, at the end of the week. Yes. He's yes. trying F1. <coughs> so, mashallah. So, uh, okay. Um, maybe we'll start a few words about why this project, how did we come to this today? Uh, I think uh, Mohammed. Uh, was very much involved from the very beginning. I'll say it. Do you need to stand? Right, you can you do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so uh, from, my, from our expertise uh, within the motorsport and the UAE, we, we, we found a gap. I'm going to try to make it as short as possible how we come up with this idea. We find there's a gap in motorsport, which is, and I see, I, I saw the struggle of all our rally drivers within UAE is to trip the car, get it ready 
and you stop rallying for three, four months and the car is left somewhere in a garage to have all the dust and to get damaged and all that. Then they remember that the next season we have a rally, then they can to go and rip the car. It costs a lot of money for a car to sit there for five or six rounds a year. So at the same time, they're using normal cars to go off-roading and these they have a lot of problems with that. They go, and from our environment, the desert is, is a huge part of our environment here. So most of our local and most of our even expats coming here, they're eager to go off-roading. So there's no car to combine these two things. I wanna go really heavy and racing off-roading or racing in the desert and using a car on day-to-day -day basis on the main roads. So uh, the Zarouk came up. Zarouk, actually, if I'm gonna talk about the word Zarouk, it's, a, it's an Arabic snake. Uh, snake in the desert. It's an Arabic peninsula. Uh, it's very known as an agile and fast snake. It's very nice looking. If you look at it, it's uh, it's a very tiny, but it's fast and agile. And and the Arabic name of it is Zaru, which is means something. Big. So uh, this is the naming of Zaru, and we we believe that the car will be as fast as agile as Zaru. And uh, later on in the presentation, we'll tell you exactly when you can test drive it. So uh, that's uh, the very short <laughs> version of they all, they all like, yes, yes. <laughs> it's at the end of the presentation. You have to sit through the rest before we can talk about that. So that's mainly how we come up with Zaru. Uh, maybe just one additional word on that. The, as you said, we saw a gap in the market because we wanted to create a championship here in the UAE to um, help people compete, to help groom pilots who will eventually perform uh, in the global arena. And we couldn't find either the proper facilities, racetracks, because today it's only Baha's point to point, there is no proper sand racetrack, and there's no proper car that from a performance perspective and that from a convenience perspective, i.e. if you live here, Without AC, not possible. And if you look at the racing cars that today exist, they don't have any of those. So we really need it. And uh, since we had the capabilities locally to, uh, to build this car. So one important point, which is fairly uh, unique today, uh, thanks to, uh, to Frederick and Anthony, is that we are able to design, build, and assemble the car here. It's a real Emirati brand and car because the, uh, well, it is physically designed here, but it's also the body is bolted and manufactured here uh, in, in Frederick's workshop. The uh, body, actually today as we speak, there's a machine that is currently grinding and sculpting the molds of the body. So the, the it's in Najman, I think, is it? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we're even working in several Emirates. I mean, the, uh, the, the old facilities are here in Dubai, but we're uh, clearly in the future, we probably will be uh, leveraging uh, other, other assets in uh, probably in, in Abu Dhabi, most likely, because there's a lot of things there uh, as well, and the cars assembled here. So, it, it is important for us that we are uh, an Emirati company because we're building a car for the UAE market initially, even though we know that from a marketing perspective, there is scope to expand and to sell the car internationally, but it was made and designed for uh, this uh, particular market. So here, you can see some, uh, I don't know if you can see very well, but this is interesting for you to see the Genesis. I think this, uh, I took this picture when uh, we were in a, in a bar uh, near, uh, uh, near the marina, when uh, the first sketches which were brought by, uh, by Anthony, which were the very uh, the top hand here, which are the very first sketches that uh, Anthony uh, came with, uh, which really got us very enthusiastic about, about the project. And then obviously uh, there was the design, uh, the design elements where we worked uh, on the engineering side uh, with Campos. And these are some snippets of, uh, of the team working on the chassis. So again, um, uh, you unfortunately you can't see the car today, but Believe us, it is real, but well, you can see some bits of it. And actually, this was taken quite a few months ago, so the car is well, well more advanced than uh, than that. Uh, but uh, just to, to see how, for you to see how the team has worked 
on uh, on getting this car uh, this car ready and up and running for him. What defines what are the main elements that are critical or key for us and for this car? Um, first of all, uh, well, they're all important. I'll start with probably what drives really the performance of such a car is the suspension. A lot of time and a lot of uh, let's say, um, creative discussions happen between our engineering friends here on fine-tuning this particular element because for an off-road racing car, I think you mentioned yesterday 50, 70, well, a huge percentage of the actual performance of the car comes from this particular, uh, this particular element. Uh, the car is closed and has AC. Again, we want this car to be able to be used all year long in the UAE, uh, I was last year, last week I was in the desert and I still needed a bit of AC. So uh, it's, a, it's an absolute must uh, for us, for the market. Um, the car needs to be road legal because we, contrary to some buggies which are a bit cumbersome, we want the car to be able to be as versatile as, uh, as possible. We want the car to be able to be uh, the best in terms of uh, dune crossing. So having the engine uh, in the back, in the, in the middle, uh, is what, again, this was another, another set of interesting heated discussions. But for the sand, uh, we clearly uh, know that it is the best way for the car to be, uh, to be, uh, to be um, designed. Um, another element which sometimes some people find uh, surprising for an off-road car, it is a rear-wheel drive car for several reasons. Uh, the first um, critical, uh, when you talk about racing, power-to-weight ratio is the weight. For such a car, were we to have four-wheel drive, we would add an additional what, 150, 200 kilos. So, uh, you know, you're adding 20% of the weight of the car, it's huge. So, and considering that it's a racing car, you know, you go sufficiently fast that the rear wheel drive, which sometimes you need in crossing, is less necessary. Uh, so these are the main elements which, in terms of uh, conceiving the car, drove, uh, drove the design. Where, where are we today? Today, the chassis, the wiring, the engine, all is done. What we're waiting for, and uh, I remember when we discussed uh, during the Dubai Motor Show, one of the challenges when you're building a, a, a new company here, especially in the, in the automotive industry, is the supply chain. You're not, you're not in Europe where you have suppliers uh, and potential uh, a whole supply chain behind you here. It is more difficult. So we are getting the suspension in uh, and we are getting the molds uh, finished. So uh, we should be, and I'll, I'll get to the timetable later, later, later on, uh, we're in a good position to, to deliver the car very, very quickly. As far as the racetrack is concerned, the concepts, the designs are all done. We found potentially uh, a place and we're working on the, uh, the final designs and the, the, the financing to start the construction of uh, an off-road uh, sand uh, racing track. Uh, can, you, can you allow me here to just elaborate a little bit about the, the track? In order for us, uh, it's also we, we found a, a bit of a gap actually. If, if I'm going to buy this car and be very proud of it, it's nice, it's, it's amazing. It, and I'm new to this industry, new to this motorsport, or new to the off roading uh, facility, is where can I try this car? Who's going to teach me how to drive it? So that's also we, we thought of that and we, we, we decided that we should build a track, a specialized track, off road track, to teach people how to use it. Maybe use that track even for uh, like an autocross or a rally cross for the off road or for the Zaru, for a different uh, participant. So this track is a starting point for people to, to try to use the car, to learn the car, and for the experienced people to race in the track. And and and, and that, the, the sky is the limit on that. You know, we can have corporates, we can have uh, visitors from outside, increase the tourism which can come and use the car as a passenger, as a driver. So, so that's why it's, uh, it's completing the project with the, with the racing track to be a full Sorry, I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. <laughs> um, a few, few additional things in terms of, of, of partnership. Uh, obviously, the strategic partnerships are sealed with our friends here. We're working on additional partnerships. So I can't tell you who, but um, with major uh, car manufacturers for, for, for the engine, maybe, and some, some other parts, and some other suppliers. 
Uh, so we'll be announcing those. Uh, one of them should be able to be sealed uh, in the very uh, in the very near future. I think it's time that we uh, we show what the people actually came for uh, is to see the uh, to see the actual design of the car. So if if you could, um, I'm tall enough. Yes, yes. So th this is this is the work of uh, of Anthony. So this is you only saw until today the. Uh, very first sketches. I think these are like nine months old, but these are very fresh from the uh, out of uh, of Anthony's, uh, Anthony's computer. Um, I don't know if you if you want to say a few words, Anthony, but I, I know that you don't like it. But uh, <laughs> if you want to say a few words on uh, maybe not your inspiration, but maybe what you what drove you uh, when you when you drew this. Uh, the just, just what I explained before, basically, uh, to the camera. There's no direct inspiration when you think something like this. You start from the brief, so the brief was very clear. It has to be the best car in the dune, so you need short overhangs and big tires. And we wanted like a sporty feel, so it has to look like a, like a sports car. So when you combine this, basically, it goes through your brain and you end up with that. So. <coughs> The idea was it's a two-seater, so there's no need for a big trunk, and the engine will sit very low for the center of gravity, so we still have a lot of space at the back of the car, and but we can accommodate a very nice silhouette like this, like it's called fastback. And uh, this is very particular on this market. Some other um, idea was like it has to look a bit futuristic, but still very strong. So some some areas of the car are very brutal, like the, the bumper, for instance, it's very strict. And some other areas are much more, uh, in a way, feminine, with like nice uh, soft shape. I would say it's uh, you know the back of the car with some curvy uh, shape around the wheels. And the rest of it is all guided by techniques, basically to accommodate the best. Uh, feature to get the best performance into the car, so again, short of length, very big clearance around the, uh, the wheels, so all the sand can go through easily, and the cabin has to be closed. It's a small cabin as well for the air conditioning, etc. Big enough, well, to check, you know, for uh, tall people. I fit them. Yeah, very <laughs> much. Well, uh, above 190 and above 100. <laughs> Plus kilos. And again, <laughs> yeah, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, of techniques uh, when we, I work with, with Frédéric on uh, like defining the, the, the trim lines, uh, defining how we're gonna open the car, how we're gonna service the car. So everything is very easy to maintain. You can dismantle the panel very easy. So this, again, from what Mohamed was explaining, is very different from a normal uh, mass production car, which is uh, a nightmare to maintain. Yes. So combining all this and making it look cool because basically you, know, you have to feel proud of your car and uh, so that's, that's always the, the main motive, uh, motto. And uh, we will uh, circulate later on, yes, yeah, we'll be uh, generous enough to circulate high-risk photos of these to you guys. <coughs> so uh, yeah. you'll get the chance to... If, if you haven't done so, uh, give us... Uh, most of the people I can recognize, I should have their contact details, but we will send you these uh, these high-res uh, renderings uh, of the car. Frederick, I don't know if you want to add something, because again, you had some uh, very interesting, there were some very interesting uh, discussions and, and, and input from yourself into the, the design of the car. I don't know if there's anything else you want, you want to add on the uh, some of the technical, the practical aspects of, of, of it. Yeah, Anthony uh, told us uh, the, the main uh, aspect of the car. What can I say is um, we, we will use a uh, vacuum bagging. We, we, we will make this car with a state of art. Uh, the, the, the body will be in, um, in fiberglass or in carbon fiber. <coughs> it will be uh, infused under vacuum. The uh, chassis, the, the tube of the chassis, will be cut by uh, laser, so it's uh, fully uh, very well adjusted. And um, all the car will be uh, handmade. We, we will uh, make everything by, by ourselves. And, and we can capitalize on your experience in new materials, such as carbon fiber, which will be uh, used to some extent into, yeah. into the uh, 
uh, let's say, decoration or interior side, but also later on into uh, more critical elements of the car. And again, that's one of the reasons we also liked working is you're very good with that. <laughs> um, and again, actually the, the orange thing was a very uh, heated debate whether you like the orange or not. We, we like it, but some people were more classical with the, with the gray and all that. I don't know, maybe we should strike a vote for the prototype. Which color should it be? Well, uh, this is a discussion we can have, uh, we can have later on. Uh, this, uh, probably you all have to come closer to see it. These are the technical specifications uh, of the car. I'm not a technical guy, so I'm not going to talk a lot about that. Um, some of the key elements uh, you already know, you know, the car is going to weigh about a ton. It's going to be powered by a 3.5 V6 uh, engine, which should yield something standard 300 horsepower. It can be boosted up to 500 or even higher, but that's for the beginning, 500 horsepower for a ton should be enough in terms of, uh, of, of power. Uh, this is going to be coupled with uh, a proper uh, um, racing um, uh, gearbox, which will really transform or give you know, the, uh, the drivers a real uh, great experience and performance. Uh, the suspension travel, uh, these uh, can be uh, adapted depending on the usage that the person wants want to go, you know, up to 45 centimeters of suspension travel, which on a car that weight is tremendous. Uh, so uh, again, don't forget, everyone's raving about how good the car is looking. It looks very good. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> but also thank you, you too. It is a great racing car, first and foremost. Yes, you can take it on the road, but it's a racing car. Uh, don't expect uh, electric seats and, uh, and all that jazz. You know, we're, we're chasing weight everywhere we could. The only compromise we made for the climate, even though today is not the day, <laughs> is the AC. Apart from that, it is an absolute and pure, pure racing car. So uh, we'll, send you, uh, we'll send you those. I think I can say that they're, they're more or less Fixed. We're still obviously fine-tuning a few things, but here are the... Uh...